the tires are smoking. <laughs> Let's do this. What's going on? Welcome to a very different episode of Driven Hard. And um, haven't been driving as much, you know, with everything going on, or lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, she's filthy. And uh, I was just plugging away, getting some work done. Every time I looked at her, I was like, oh, yeah, it has to be clean. So uh, film figured I'd do a little video, kind of, uh, Tell you a bit about myself and plans for the Range Rover and what else is going to be coming to the channel. And um, yeah, so that's kind of really it. I actually got this inspiration. I was watching some um, Obsessed Garages uh, videos and Matt, he does a lot of these watching his Porsche and, and whatever else he gets from his customers. But uh, so I was like, sweet, that's a good idea. I'll just talk and chill and kind of just get my thoughts out on camera. And, and uh, so you guys get to know me a little bit and love to hear what you, th what you think. Let me know more about yourself in the comments, but um, so let's get to it. So, so where do we begin, huh? Uh, let's begin with um, why a Range Rover, right? Why a Range Rover? Um, honestly, I think. A big reason was, you know, my dad used to love these things, you know, back in the 90s, you know, Range Rover was kind of those ultimate luxury vehicles. Um, you know, it was one of the few that had that type of class and uh, the capability. And, uh, you know, so he was kind of talking about them and he never had one, but uh, I just kind of fell in love with them. Especially when uh, the generation before this one came out. I don't know what year that was, but when that came out, man, yeah, I remember seeing them on the road all the time. The first one I ever saw was we were driving up to Whistler, BC, saw one on the, on the 99 there. And it was just like, it's just, you know, whoa, had such a presence. And uh, yeah, ever since that, kind of loved it. And, you know, wanted one. So way back in the high school days. And last year, we were able to pick this one up. And uh, man, it's been everything I've wanted. You know, it's, it's, it's fast as hell. It's, uh, oh, you guys know the videos, go off running as much as I possibly can. Uh, you know, and, um, uh, where's the big one? You know, and that's kind of what, I just love what the brand stands for. Um, you know, a reliable, dependable vehicle. <laughs> No, not at all, right? Um, it stands for just, you know, look good, that command driving position, feel good, and have the confidence to kind of go everywhere you want or anywhere you want. And that's what I've really come to love about this thing. And, you know, I take it everywhere I can. Uh, tires being the biggest thing, um, preventing me from going anywhere that maybe a Wrangler would go to, but 
Um, if I wanted a Wrangler, I would have bought a Wrangler. I didn't want that. I wanted something that was going to be comfortable as hell on road. There's a Wrangler, Rubicon, right? I love that color too, that army green. Um, if I wanted something like that, I would have got it, but I wanted something that I put 40, there's 41,000, almost 42,000 kilometers on this. And it's literally just, it just turned a year old this week. Um, from when I drove it off the dealership and some of you might be like, Oh, that's not a lot of driving, but my biggest year before that was 27,000 kilometers when I was working a sales job, making house calls back in the day. So that's, um, do a lot of driving and it's been comfortable as hell. I drove it from Canada to Mexico, 5,100, 5,200 kilometers from Canada to Mexico, all across the States. I got a whole video on that on the channel. And um, yeah, like it's just, it's comfortable. Would not be comfortable in a Wrangler doing that. But I probably would have more fun in the Wrangler at Moab. I did go to Mohub when I was driving and uh, unfortunately I didn't really get to do any of the uh, like fins and things or, or Hell's, Hell's, uh, Hell's, Hell's, fuck what is it, Hell's Dragon, the Lion's Back or some of that super, super cool shit. Um, I didn't get to do those just because it was brand new, 5,000 kilometers and I was by myself and you know, in Moab, in a place that I've never been to before. So I was like, I was nervous and, you know, still an expensive fucking truck. So, you know, it's just when you're by yourself, there's more risk. And, uh, you know, I even stayed and put a message out on the forums like, hey, anyone in Moab who wants to do some wheeling, let me know. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of passing through. It is what it is. And anyone in the comments might be like, hey, you should be using two buckets. I know that, but I'm just doing my rims. And if you haven't seen my rims, they're shit. They have to get redone. Um, I got stuck in a, in a like, I call it a hole, a crater. In a, I'll put a clip up and I just absolutely destroyed them. But, you know, people are just like, oh, are you mad? Or no, man, I was fucking happy. That was fucking exciting. It's just, you know, one of the things that when I bought this thing, it's, I bought it to use it. Um, you know, I didn't buy it just so my wife could, you know, or I could take our kids to, to the mall or any of that cliche shit. You know, it's a Range Rover. So I wanted to use it as much as I possibly could. And, um, you know, should I get some bigger tires? Planning on it. Um, but in the beginning, I just wanted it to be bone stock and see what I could do with it bone stock. And that's kind of how Land Rover builds these things, right? If they wanted to put knobbier tires on them, they would have. They probably should have done that with the Defender, but I don't know. Somebody at Lander was not thinking clearly on that thing at all. Um, but, you know, I also go down the highway at 200 kilometers an hour, so I love these Pirellis. Um, but they are, they are, oh my God, they are shit off-road. Uh, the tiniest little bit of mud, and they just slide all over the place. And the truck really has to try to fight to find traction. Um, I've been in snow once in Colorado on the way down, spring snowstorm and only a few inches, but I was on a hill, just slight incline, stopped at a stop sign. 
hit the gas and it just started sliding. And I was like, what the hell? You know, because I'm coming from like a, a two front wheel drive Mazda with snow tires, zero issues in the snow. And here I am in my brand new Ranger, we're sliding, trying to find traction. And so I just stay on the throttle. It keeps sliding a little, but it eventually it figured it out and I pulled away no problem. But, you know, I tried doing some top stopping tests and man, these tires are oh, beyond shit in the snow. But I'm one of those guys who, you know, when you're in winter time, I get snow tires. Um, you know, but uh, as I said, that was a spring snowstorm. I was just stopping through, so. But, um, where was I? Yeah, so, I don't know, I just kind of get it, got it to use it um, to its abilities, and that was it, because, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to start this channel, right? Because just people aren't really, I wasn't seeing enough videos of people using it to their abilities, or to its abilities. So, it's like, man, you know, there's probably people out there who think like me, who kind of want to see these things pushed a little, a little bit further than what the reviewers can push them, right? Actual owners. But then, you know, most owners just, you know, either they're too worried about scratching their baby, right? Because they worry about the cost to fix it, or I don't know, their wife gets mad at them, or they lack some testicular fortitude. Um, but I was like, man, I'm just going to make videos that I'd want to see that I've been looking for all over the internet. And the people who like those, those are the people I want to hang out with because <laughs> we think the same. So, but you know, I have fun. Um, you know, so many people are like, Hey, get bigger tires. I will when I move. Right now, we just don't have anywhere to store the rims. No, we do, that's a lie. It's the, when we move back to Canada, we're in Mexico. I don't wanna, like, do you, would you really wanna travel or not travel cross country with them, but have to ship four rims that are gonna weigh hundreds of pounds with a set of tires, you know, so we just don't wanna deal with that. So we're gonna do it over the next 12 months when we move back and let's so we move back there into our house. Yeah, I'll grab us a, a some 20s and um, probably some KO2s. And then we're really going to see what she can do. So, until the meantime, I will just keep doing this. But man, I cannot wait to get these re rims refinished. They're just, they're gone absolutely like chunks like there's literally chunks missing from them like it's bad but um i got a place in town here that is going to do them all completely refinished to stock like i took full inspection of their factory and um saw all their work in the different stages and uh, they'll be brand new again and it'll cost me i think it's like 180 a wheel nothing absolutely nothing of course in mexico shit's a lot cheaper here so uh but even though i was calling around in the states and it was only about 220 250 a wheel but then i wasn't inspecting the work to see how how you know how good it was going to be but What else is this saying? So yeah, anyway, so I ordered this back in January actually for my, for my birthday, my uh, 31st, 31st, 35th birthday is, uh, this was my present. And uh, ordered in January, uh, spec'd it out the way I wanted. 
and uh, it came 98% to my spec. Um, I ordered it from Langley, Langley BC Land Rover. I'll never, they'll never get another business from me ever again. And if anyone's considering buying anything, definitely don't go shop with those guys at all. Um, you know, the sales rep was an idiot. Uh, he just, full of bullshit, said he was all about follow up and, and all of that. And I've been doing sales for God knows how long, but uh, you, you know, you say that to your customer, you better follow up. And the only time he actually ever, ever, ever followed up with me was when he saw me on TFL and he, he said, hey, thanks for the shout out. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. Um, not a fucking guy. Uh, anyways, but the two things that got wrong with it, um, I didn't check the option for the CD player and they put one in anyways. And they're like, oh, it's no cost. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about the money, idiot. I give the fuck about now I have no upper glove box space. That's the reason I don't want it. And they couldn't fix it because they're useless. And I wasn't, I wasn't waiting for them to build a new one, right? And then, um, and then the, the brake calipers, I was expecting them in red and they didn't do it in red, they screwed up. And then they tried to hide their screw up as well. Not really pissed me off because they wouldn't take ownership of it, right? Um, they 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 had caught me some you know a few hundred dollars worth of free stuff, but you know they lost a customer. And whenever somebody talks about Langley Land Rover, I just tell them, nah, don't waste your time with those guys at all. So versus they could have made the first time experience for a customer superb. And um, and a couple of years I would have been buying my second one from them as well, but they screwed up. So, kind of big on how you treat your customers. It's kind of an important thing for me, as it should be to everybody. But uh, so, customer ordered it, picked it up, made a whole video of it, delivery video. Tell I'm big on the YouTube thing. So. So that was kind of cool. Keep in mind, I do do some of these videos for tax purposes. <laughs> but um, it's a whole nother thing. Um, yeah, and then it was just, man, 1500 kilometers broken in, it went off-roading. Um, off the highway, just outside of Hope, Hope, BC. Took it off road for the very first time with only 1,500 kilometers on it. Land Rover says that it usually takes seven owners, no, three years and seven owners for, no, seven years and three owners for it to, to go off road for people to take their trucks off road. It's like, well, yeah, it's, you know, but times are changing, I'm, I hope. But, uh, Yeah, this thing is just so much fun off-road. You know, so much fun. It's just... Today I was watching some videos, probably while I'm cleaning it out. And I was like, man, I just want to go... Go into the bush. But the problem... Because oh, this is gunk. The, the, the problem with that is... I'm so limited here. With where I can go.
right. One more wheel. This one's the one with the least amount of damage on it, actually. Because one side in that video, you see I got buried on one side on the driver's side. This used to be the driver front passenger, but done some tire changes between then. And, um, or the front driver, I think. Did I say driver and pass? Whatever. Used to be on the driver's side. And just, just those two rims were the ones that got messed up the worst. But, uh, yes, that was just kind of how she was leaning. saying so yeah picked her up played around with her for a little bit got to know her and then i uh, drove across the united states all the way down to mexico and i'm telling you driving your absolute dream car you know i like by myself drives wife hates that but you know i like my time in it uh you know across the u.s which has always been a bucket list thing for me to do but doing it in a brand new you know factory spec car you're the first owner of it i'm telling you that 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 experience is it, it ranks up there with like getting married and my kids being born like that's how much it uh it meant to me and uh you know so those of you who you know you got a dream or goal like that do whatever you got to do to work hard to you know, get your stuff together so you can do that because man, that that experience that, that'll that'll do something to you. These new tires actually have noise canceling on them. P N C S noise canceling. So there's foam inside pieces of foam inside that, that take some uh, of the vibration that tires make and on the highway you can actually notice it not a lot but if you're like me you drive a lot you notice every little creak rattle then yeah you'll notice it I thought it's kind of cool I should probably write a review on tire rack about that actually And I remember when these rims were brand new, no damage. I used to take care of them so well. But uh, I'm rough with my stuff because I use it. That's okay. I don't believe cars are meant to be garaged, right? Unless you maybe you got a collector's car or something worth a couple mil. But if you're just driving around and let's be honest, it's a hundred thousand dollar Land Rover needs. It's only a hundred grand in the grand scheme of things. It's a lot of money, but it's not really a lot of money. Um, you know, use it. Don't be afraid to get it out, get it dirty. You know, obviously don't destroy it. But, um, you know, I bought it to use and that's what I'm doing. Loving every moment of it. These rooms are so much nicer. Like it's just so smooth and shiny <laughs> compared to the shit that's all worn off on the other ones. Oh, I gotta get those done. Challenge is we only have one car, so I'm trying to get that done, uh, it's gonna take them a few days. And so I guess we just rent a car or just just not need it. But um, yeah, so that's the only issue right now. Just timing. 
but and like you know then I'm gonna have to go through the emotional roller coaster of damaging them again right because you know like it's funny I was watching a GoPro video of it was back here on the other side and facing right and I saw the rear tire it slipped off a rock I slipped so it slipped off a rock and went pew, and boom, instant damage. And I'm like, oh shit, look at that. That's how these, t I guess they just don't stick on, you know. It just, you know, shit like that happens when you're out, out on rocks and, and stuff and you don't have any real protection. So, but once again, I'll take the experience of, you know, I don't want to call it rock crawling, but off-roading in this and damaging some rims and, and, and stuff than, than having it and being too scared to do that. Like, I just, that's not life to me. That's not living. That would just, would suck. <laughs> it's like driving a Porsche and not, ex not experiencing launch control. Like, what's, what's the point of having a fast car then? So my, it's probably the last product I'm gonna buy from Chemical Guys. I have their, their, what is that, that torque foam cannon? And the freaking bottle and the nozzle, I can't get them apart. I've tried everything. I'll show you it in a second, but. So I gotta go into a Facebook group and see uh, what people are saying pick up a new new foam can because I hate this thing this thing just oh, it's just shit but let's get something on there yeah I hate this thing
one of the things about working with a big truck is you can raise it and lower it. when you need to, it's always helpful. So I guess when I got it, I put, not I guess, I, I know what I did when I got it. I put PPF and I did coatings of uh, the ceramic coating because I just wanted to protect it, you know, my baby, right? Protect it the best I can. And I definitely tell you, I am not a fan of PPF anymore. It's, um, yeah, no, not at all. It just doesn't look as nice, and it might have been kind of a crappier job. Uh, with where I got it installed. But, um, yeah. I was not a fan of it at all. And especially when you're off-roading. I'll show you guys that when, I, when it dries, but a little got snagged on a bush or something. And so the PPF tore. And it looks like shit. So that's a problem. I also don't mind, uh, just the front end's done, so I can, you know, it's all protected. But, actually this bottom panel's not protected anymore. I had to fix the damage on that. When we first got here, this fucking concrete wall, I don't know if you see it, concrete wall that we park in front of. You know, we didn't know how much space we had on both ends and when you, uh, I parked up on it. Shit, it was the first day I came here with it. Parked up on it, it was all good, it wasn't touching. And then I got a flat tire coming in Mexico and went to change that the next day. And, um, you know, I didn't pull away from the wall. And so when I jacked the truck up, it rubbed on the wall, the, uh, the bottom part of the bumper and uh, it damaged it. So I had to get that all fixed up. So they removed the PPF. Oh, and there's some undercarriage damage to it. But can't see that, so who cares?
So, let's just get this wet. So 40,000 kilometers. One year ownership. Would I get another one of these? Or do I think you should get one? Um, yeah, honestly. Um, I was telling my wife, it was like, I think we are always going to have a Range Rover in our garage at some point um, for the rest of our lives. I've loved this thing that much. Um, it's, you know, people say, you know, questionable liability issues and, and shit like that. And, you know, I've, I've had people with Lexuses that have had nothing but problems, you know, and yeah, Land Rover is definitely kind of known for some of their uh, electrical faults, if you will. But, um, you know, other than that, this truck's been solid. Um, I am having one little thing, a little hiccup with the starter, but the starter is made by Ford from what the mechanic was, or the tech at the dealership was telling me. So it's a Ford part, it's not a Land Rover part. Who do you blame? You blame Land Rover for putting a crappy Ford part in and not sourcing it from a better company? Um, or do you just say, well, the only thing that's broken on it twice has been a Ford part. When I say twice, it's hard to say if it was really Land Rover's fault or my fault. So, you know, cause the starter had moisture in it. So we don't know if it was just a faulty part or if I took it swimming for a little too long, you know, but um, it's, what's happening now with it is it's just, there's the, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember how he explained it to me. The magnetic part inside the starter, inside the new one, is weak. And so every time I start it up, it just sounds a little weak. And just because of what happened last time, it's just kind of, you know, I got PTSD. But apparently guys in the form are like, oh yeah, if you have a Land Rover, you get PTSD. It comes with it. So, all right. But, um, so he's ordered me a new part just to replace it. Um, He's like, it, sometimes it happens, right? Like you put a new water pump in a car and you know, lo and behold, it was just a shitty part or install or whatever. So, you know, whatever. But then I also knew I wasn't buying anything that was gonna be bulletproof. Um, you know, so who cares, right? I didn't buy it for you know, that type of like, people always, oh, you know, you should buy the, the Lexus LX or whatever. You know, I'm like, well, if I wanted to, I would have. So don't tell me what I should have bought. Like, that's just retarded. It's like, go buy what you want to buy and I'll buy what I want to buy. I don't know why people get so caught up in other people's purchases. I wanted to arrange it because of, I just think it's a badass looking truck in my eyes. I just love how it, you know, makes me feel. And yeah, I just, that's why I wanted it. You know, I get looks all the time. You know, when I'm out on the trails, people are like, oh shit. I'm like, well, yeah, man, it's designed to be used. But yes, yeah, so other than the starter, had no issues. Um, you know, cause yeah, zero other issues, right? I have 40,000 clicks, one year. It's not bad. I'm sure it won't always be problem free, but why do I care? It's doing exactly what I wanted it to.
You know, one thing I'm wondering, it's like, you, you see, it's not, the water's not beating. I had three layers of ceramic coating put on this, but then after the mud video, I got the whole, sh it all scratched up. Not the paint, but all the clear coat and shit. And so they had to polish the entire side, both sides of the vehicle. Like polish it, because it was just like, sh it was bad, nasty. I should have took more pictures. But, but does, when you polish your truck or your vehicle, does it completely, does that remove the ceramic coating? So I think it's like gone, because it shouldn't be beating and shit. I missed the spot there. Now, these are all the things I'm starting to notice now, now that I'm, you know, take more of an interest into detailing and learning. And like I said, you're, you're not going to learn anything about detailing here. <laughs> you're going to see some guy who just loves what he does and uh, is just having fun doing it. Um, you know, but, uh, <sighs> oh, well, I'm going to order some of that P&S. People have been saying P&S bead bead maker whatever is like the shit so i'm gonna pick some of that up on amazon once i get through my speed wipe stuff maybe a bit sooner because i have to order some soap actually so but um yeah all right where are we going now let's go around around the side I don't know if I said this, the only reason I'm, I'm rinsing it off, like the soap that I sprayed on there with that crappy little thing, is I forgot to rinse it before I sprayed it with the soap. So I might be rough with my stuff and like beat it up in the bush and, and all of that, but hey, I do take care of it. I do love this thing. I wanna keep it as, as uh, clean looking as possible. And that's probably one of the things I, like I, I love about it and hate about it the most, is it's so fun to get it covered in mud and to get it dirty, especially like the looks you get from people, you know? And uh, <laughs> like this one time I was at the dealership and I go to the dealership way more than I should. It's not because there's issues with it. Sometimes there is, they get a rock stuck in the brakes, in the brake shield or dust shield, whatever that is. And you know, they say, I come in there with problems that nobody ever has. So I'm like, yep, sounds about right. But like this one time I came in and it was just filthy as hell. I, like somebody was picking up their brand new and I was just like staring at me. And it's like, what are you doing? I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm using it. What are you doing? taking a trip to freaking ballet class. My wife does that. And I dropped daughter off ballet class in this too, but you know. And so going, I'm off topic, but it looks so nice covered in dirt. But then when it's clean, it looks absolutely beautiful, right? And I always say it's like, you know, it's the best of both worlds. What's that line about women? No disrespect, but it's like, uh, uh, you want to, 
a lady in the street, but a freak in the sheets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. But um, it's kind of what she's like. Best of both worlds. Um, so going back to the whole, hey, should you get one of these? Yeah, you should. If you love this, and I think people who buy these buy them out of passion. They don't buy them because they're worried about reliability issues or shit like that. And I think they just buy them because they, they love them. Right? Um, you totally should. My suggestion is get these things, all the gloss black trim, just get that covered in PPF because that shit will just, you go through the car wash and that gloss black will just scratch instantly. Like it's just, you know, you rub a little bit of dirt around it and I'll start scratching. So, that's a lot harder to get out. Yeah, no complaints. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the 2015 or the uh, 2021 or 2022 models. because they're switching out these, I love it, the, the five liter V8, right? 525, it makes stock. 575 for the SVR, this puts out 605 with, with the tune. And uh, I just think it sounds unbelievable. I think the SVR is probably the best sounding SUV on the market, like by far. Yeah, by far. Just the meanest. I think it's the SVR is just, it's probably one of the worst handling ones just because as cool as Land Rover and their SV department is, they just can't compete with BMW, Porsche. I don't know where Mercedes fits in with that, but they can't compete with those guys for handling for big SUVs. Um, like, don't get me wrong. Like I've, I've raced my buddy around in his, um, what is it, the C63 AMG, and we've been, you know, going down the street, the highways out of Mexico, like 180, 210, and we're taking the quarters and shit, and I'm like sticking with them. And they're all, everybody's blown away when we finally get to our spot, they're always blown away. How the hell is your truck so planted? How are you keeping up around those bends? And this thing, I'm telling you, the electronics in it and it's four wheel drive system, like you take that technology, how good it is off road, and you got you got to think like it's it's as good as a Wrangler is with the mechanical four wheel drive system that they use, right? Very little electronics interfering with stuff. This is the complete opposite. This is an extremely sophisticated um, electrical four wheel drive system with very little mechanical you know mechanical bits in between. If if you get what I'm saying, but with how good Land Rover has done that for the off road world, but then it works unbelievably on road as well just giving you the safety and the control and 
you know, like how when, if you're, you know, going down the road, like 70, 80, and you crank the steering wheel, how the rear diff will lock up just to give you some extra, you know, extra turning power. It, it's just, and it's cool because you can watch the diffs lock and unlock. I'm probably the only one who does shit like this at speed, huh? But uh, it's just, it's so cool how this thing actually handles on road when you're pushing it. And that's one of the reasons I just don't want to get fucking off-road tires because I'm in Mexico, so we, everyone drives here like they're an idiot, right? So um, it's just, it's so fun. Um, and so like, you know, cause I don't know if, would I have that same type of grip on pave, pavement, um, you know, driving the way I do, or would I have to dial that down a little bit? So I don't know, who knows, we'll see, right? Be safe out there. Okay, let's get to the back. You guys gotta ignore the Mexican bread man. He's giving out pan, which is bread. Well, not giving it out, selling it. But, uh, look at that bubble. Look at that thing, huh? Kids are going you know, crazy. Look at that. Okay, so what's coming to the channel next? Honestly, it could be one of three things. A car my wife picks, she has said the Tesla. Um, I just don't know, you know, if that's the case. Um, or I'd love to get the M5 competition pack with the competition pack. Fucking cop the other day wants to check my plates. Fucking breaks it. I guess it's my fault for covering my plates, but just gotta unscrew it, fix it up. I don't like people reading my plates here in Mexico. I had one guy, saw him taking a video, pulled up behind me, like kind of erratically, pulled up behind me one day. I had his camera taking a video. And he was either shocked to see Canadian plates down here, or he wanted my plates for some fucking reason. After that, I was like, all right, no more plates. It's actually, it's cool, because my buddies who have, not they're not buddies, but, the people I know here who have like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, you know, SLS, some of the high-end cars, they all roll with no, no plates. One of these guys has a McLaren, no plates because the cops, they won't fuck with you because they think, oh, shit, he doesn't, he doesn't have plates. So he must be connected or important or whatever the case is, right? Complete backwards thinking here because everyone's corrupt. So, by having no plates, they actually leave me alone. Versus seeing, oh, hey, this nigga's from out of town. Let's talk to him. So, I'd rather them not talk to me. So. I used to do my tailpipes all the time and they were silver. Now they're getting some soot on them finally because I've been neglecting them. Okay, what's coming to the channel next? I'm getting distracted. Um, so wifey wants a Tesla. I want the M5 competition pack. Oh, shit. Look at all that. Um, Look at that, huh? Fuck, I can take that right off. Take that off before I spray it. Fuck, where's the screwdriver? All right, I'm gonna have to go inside.
<laughs> missed it. Bien, bien. You too? I'm good. How are you? You missed the. Mana? the locos. See. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. We're going a little crazy here, too. <laughs> Take care. All right, so it's washed now. Um, one of the things here in Monterey, it's so bloody hot, it dries itself. So you get all these water water spots. And I learned something watching this other guy's channel about soft water leaves, doesn't leave water spots. So that's kind of cool. Anyways, so I got this speed wipe, but uh, like I said, I want to get that PNS bead maker because everyone who's been using it has said it's been awesome, especially how it repels the water afterwards. So it's kind of cool, but this is what I've been using for probably a year. After the wash and uh, between washes, if it gets a bit dusty and I've been loving it, but as I'm starting to learn, Chemical Guys products are kind of bottom of the line. Well, after what you can buy in stores, I'm sure, like Walmart or something, I don't know. But, so I'm just trying to get through this as much as possible now, so I can try out some of the better stuff. Let's see how much more I like that, but I am pretty happy with the shine that this thing does bring out. It is kind of cool. Already need to get the paint redone. I'm gonna get it all redone, corrected, perfect it, whatever you want to call it before we move. So it's like brand new for when I get back to my, back to Canada, get some of the dings taken off and, and shit like that. So some of the scratches, like there's a, some light ones here from, from bushes and, and stuff like that. It's hard. Like all the brush here is all like, fuck me. Those are all new. Huh? Yeah, fuck, those are fucking ding doors. Or door dings from motherfuckers here. Whoa, those are, are those fucking rock chips? On the fucking highway. Four of them, those probably rocks. Yeah. So, the couple, the, what, Saturday? Had to do a visa run, ran up to the border. It's about two hour drive. 250 kilometers or so away. And that ended up being a 12 hour drive, like from the house and back, because I had to go to a different border, which was like three hours away. Um, so I ended up doing about 800 and something, almost 900 kilometers uh, on Saturday driving, which, hey, don't get me wrong, what a great way to spend the day. However, we ran through a storm. There was a tornado in town. So I was getting hit with the brunt of that storm up north a little bit. And um, I might have been going too fast on the country roads and it looks like a whole bunch of rock chips. So shit, huh? But like I said, I got, I'm gonna get all, yeah, wow, those are new. Those suck. Yeah, it has to be rock chips. Wow, brutal. Oh well, 
It's life. That is brutal though. Yeah, they're visible. I don't know if you guys can see them. I, I definitely can see them. I'm not doing the panels, like the door jams, or even the windows or anything, because we're not driving over the next few days. It's going to just get dirty anyways. I just wanted to get the brunt of the dirt off. So I could sleep a little better. Oh, don't tell me that. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought there was a chip on the taillight. Um, so, okay, so the other car, 911 Turbo, the new one. That's something else I've been eyeing, looking at. But fuck, man, those are like 300 Canadian. Like, that's just, that's still a little ways away. But, uh, that's the other, that's like my ultimate dream car. 911 Turbo, we were, I was set on the convertible, but uh, I don't know, not anymore. So Tesla, um, but I don't think she'll go with that. I don't know, I, I just don't like it, the Tesla's interiors. Yeah, they need to, they need to step up their game now that, Porsche is taking away some of their market share. Man, I wish you guys could see these scratches, huh? Whew. Um, now that Porsche is taking away their market share. I don't think Tesla can do such a bland, boring ass interior like they've been doing. They need to, uh, they need to evolve like all car companies. So we'll see what comes up from them over the next few years. Let me a comment below if you know every little ding, scratch, chip on your car, just like me. Everything, all right? Yeah, and like, I don't even like how the PPF feels. It's like when you're wiping it. So I'm gonna get that removed by the shop who put it on when we go back to Canada. 
Um, that's the only reason I haven't had one of the local shops do it here yet is I just, there's no point in paying for it when the shop's gonna fix it when I get back there. So I just gotta kind of deal with a shitty job for now. Cause you can tell like edges are sticking it or it's just been garbage since day one. So it's definitely a mistake getting that done. Yeah, and like you can see the PPS bubbling here. I don't know. I don't want to blame the shop, but you know, it wasn't my fault. But he's fixing it, so that's why I'm not calling them out by name or anything like that, because at least they're standing behind the job. And that, that does mean something, right? You can screw something up as long as you own up to it. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons I think you should always that make you money and not just like money to pay your bills, but enough money to have fun so that when you do dumb shit, you can just pay for it. And that is one of the things my wife said. It's like, no, you know, just make sure we good. I know how you're gonna be. You're gonna break something, then you're gonna wanna go fix it no matter how much it is. I'm like, yeah, probably. But you only live once, so why not enjoy it? You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing better than, like, I just love doing this. Like, this is perfect. Evening winding down. Normally, I'm not talking to anybody but myself, so that's why I've kind of been a little sloppy with this job. But, uh, it's like you're kind of getting to know your car, right? It's like the, 
you know, seeing what's up, how you been, you know, wiping it down every inch, finding some new scratches, some new chips, some new damage, right? Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what this this is to me. She still looks beautiful. Still can be happier with her. You know, because of that PNS stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna order that when I get in in the house. Eat some dinner. Order it. Food delivery. Hmm. Spraying the cloth does make it glide a lot easier. I've been watching a couple guys on YouTube do that. That's what it's all about. It's, uh, you know, watching some of your favorite detail guys detail their stuff. You learn how to do it yourself. You know, you're kind of sloppy and crappy in the beginning like I am. But, you know, when you pass that on, you keep learning. It's just fun taking care of your shit. I mean, right? I'd love to learn how to do paint correction or fill in the chips and stuff myself versus taking it to somebody to do because that would be, I think, just a kind of a really useful, useful skill to have to be able to do and polishing i'd love to learn how to polish the car myself because then i could just avoid trips to get it polished when i scratch something or need something buffed out or whatever the case is Like I said, I'm not doing the windows, not doing anything else because I'm not driving it. I love this thing. It needs a real good wash though. Like fucking inside and outside. This belongs on the front underneath. Little, little spoiler or something for aerodynamics, I'm guessing. Lost this going over some sand a little too fast. But got my uh, got my toe strap in here got my toe strap in there yeah. cargo net yeah I need to go out and do some wheeling so yeah I need to do that soon need to need to need to need to it needs a real like real proper fucking clean holy shit yeah this thing's really filthy yeah like look at that huh all up in there Jeez. and there is all like yeah it needs a proper proper i just don't have the time right now Busy with work and to do this thing properly, it takes me like three, four, five hours. And I just, right now, I just don't have that toe to die as much as I'd want to. But, oh well. Oh, she's good for now. Hope you guys all enjoyed this, but uh, yeah, no, this, this was kind of fun. We'll kind of see what the response is like on this video, but uh, 
Yeah, let me know. It's good times.